Hey Woodcutters, Topsaw here. Today's video is how the pros put in a privacy fence out of redwood, one by sixes, six foot long, two by four rails, and then steel posts. These pros actually have a lot of really cool tricks to get these things in quick. 100 foot of fence in about six hours. So it's pretty impressive. So watch the video till the end to see how they do it. So as you look down from the drone, you can see how perfectly straight that fence is. And there's that 160 degree bend and then perfectly straight again. Um, I used to be a building contractor before I taught high school wood shop and I did a lot of fences, but these guys taught me a ton of tricks. The first one is they did a beautiful string job stringing their line and then they used spray paint to lay out their post holes and they made it just a little bit under eight foot so that they trim their rails down to the eight foot length. If they were just spot on or a little bit over, they wouldn't be able to get that angle cut on there and they'd have to buy 10 foot rails which are expensive. All right, after they got a nice layout and figured it all out with the homeowner, they used a 110 electric jackhammer to kind of break up the dirt and then a post hole digger to take out that loose dirt. They only actually went down with that electric ja jackhammer and post hole digger about 10 inches into the ground. Um, and it, it was pretty easy to do. That electric jackhammer is just breaking it up and then the guy follows with that post hole digger taking out that loose dirt. After they were done digging about 10 inches into the ground, they kept the string up the whole time and they used a super cool um, post hole driver. Uh, and this is the first time I've ever seen one of these really small four stroke gas powered post hole drivers. Really cool invention. Um, this thing's a game changer for fences. One guy's holding the post with a level on it and then the other guy on a really short, comfortable, safe step stool is holding this gas powered post hole driver. This thing is made by Christie in Australia. They aren't cheap, uh, but they were unbelievable how they expedited this whole process. So here it is right here. You can see it could take round poles, square poles, or these channel posts that I have here. It'll take T posts. That steel driving ram in there was really hard. Actually, I don't know if it was steel. It might have been titanium or something because it wasn't marred at all. And then like a little weed eater, um, four stroke engine on there, gas engine on there that could be replaced pretty easily if you burn that thing up. Um, really clever. And they had such a great system going. So that one guy's holding the post with the level and both planes. And then the other guy's holding the gas powered post hole driver and then driving that down another 14 inches past the 10 inches they dug. Um, and you can see there holding the level on it and you can see that post just kind of inching away. Every little drive with that gas powered driver um, brings it down a little bit further. There's a little bit better view on it and you can just see it inching down. So the eight foot posts go 24 in the ground uh, and the bottom 14 is done with this Christie gas powered post hole driver. Again, I'll put a link to this in the description. I'm sure you could rent them as well, and I think there's even mail order places you could rent them from. So they only had to dig 10 inches, and then they drove that post 14 inches past that to get two feet in the ground. It was super solid after that, but then they put concrete in the hole for those top 10 inches. And then this was another trick uh, that was really cool. They didn't mix up any concrete at all in a wheelbarrow and have a bunch of things to clean up and concrete all over the place. They actually put a little bit of water in the hole, then they poured the concrete in there dry, and then poured a little bit more water out of a bucket into it and mixed it up with a piece of rebar. Pieces of rebar they had had that little bend in there so you don't bust your knuckles on that steel channel post. They just kind of mixed the water in that way a little bit of water at a time, and they only brought the concrete up to a few inches below grade, so that once it all got all tapped down, they just cover it back up with dirt, and it was a really clean, finished look. So I think the tips they had here were so efficient for saving time. And the whole time, 
doing all of this, the string stays up to make sure everything's perfectly in line. One thing that makes a fence look really, um, I don't know, amateur is if, if there's any kind of waves in it. So they really did a good job staying true to that string the whole time. You can see right there, they are perfectly in line. So that when the boards go up, they stay in line. Then they drive those posts as far as they can, and then they figure out where the top rail is going to go, and then they use this handheld battery-powered bandsaw to cut every post off. Another way to have the back side of the fence look really clean. So the top rail is going to go right to the top of the post rather than the post um, stand high over the rail. And then every section gets two rails dropped next to it, and then they, they don't actually even use a tape here. They just put the rail in the markings, scribe that line at whatever angle it is, depending on grade, and then they cross-cut that rail so that it's a perfect tight fit on every one of them. So they just walk along, scribe that line, cut that rail even if it's at an angle so that's a perfect fit into that uh, channel post. The guy doing this fence was an old student of mine. Um, I was going to do the fence myself, but he gave me such a great deal. Uh, I'm really glad I had him do it, and I learned a ton watching him do this fence. Uh, the, the fence itself is going to be these one by six pickets with uh, dog eared tops and redwood. And then on these rails, these steel posts uh, are really nice. I like these steel posts a ton, and I really like the way they drove them through past the hole. And then hanging the rails, you can see how they are just all flush with the top of the post. And that's because they kind of did that layout first and then trimmed all the posts down to a Sharpie line so that all the rails sit in right at the top. And then the bottom rail right there, two-man job. They just, one guy's holding one end, the other guy's holding the other end. They tap it up with a drill driver, just put one screw in there to hold it. And you can see how tight that fit is in between the post. And that actually gives the fence a lot of rigidity as well. So you can see they're just knocking out these rails. The steel post is marked where they're supposed to go to. They're only putting one of these um, exterior Torx head screws in for now. And then once all the rails are up, they go back and put two screws per end in. And there is some grade here. So these rails kind of accommodate that grade, but they look um, parallel to the grade, so that they look really nice. And then those bevel cuts on that bottom rail are a really tight fit um, as they go into the post. And you know that pressure between the posts keeps the posts really strong side to side, and then that U-shape in there keeps the post strong front to back, coupled with the fact that they're actually 24 inches in the ground and only the top 10 inches have concrete. I really like that a lot. Uh, I learned a lot seeing that. I would have dug 24 inches down and poured a ton of concrete in there, but I don't think it would have been any stiffer. So the top of the post looks really nice. You can see the four screws at that intersection. I do actually have a 16 foot section here. So in case somebody needs to drive through, we could unscrew the 16 foot rails. That's a 16 section there unscrew these long rails right here, pull off the whole section of fence and drive through there if we ever had to. We're just gonna put one post on the back side to touch the ground in the middle of that 16, but not in the soil. Once the rails are all on, then we go to the fence boards. We're gonna put one wherever there's a turn in the fence and a low point and a high point on the fence. So there's that 160 degree turn, nail on the top, and then that board gets marked with a Sharpie and string pulled between the top of the board. So the string goes on that nail to the next board to the next board, making sure that all of them, all the tops will have a nice straight line and that there's enough clearance on the soil. So the reason the point of the Sharpie is is that you're gonna just kind of move that board all the way down the rails and make sure that it's gonna be able to touch the string at the top and clear the soil on the bottom. And that way you don't have to do any digging at all. So that was very well done. You could tell these guys have been working together a long time and built a lot of fences. And then once the 
board, you know, four or five fence boards are put on there, then all of the boards are laid out on the bottom rail, and then they just get um, pneumatically nailed on there really quick. That pneumatic nailer uh, has a couple of advantages. Not only is it super quick and it keeps the nails slush or a teeny bit recess, but there's actually glue on those nails, so as it goes in, it melts that glue, and then that, that's a nail hold. So you kind of see the fence here looking beautiful. You don't gap them at all because they're pretty wet, so you get them as tight as you can next to each other and up to that string, and then as they dry, they'll gap out just the teeniest amount. So you can see how perfectly straight that is, how tight those rails look, how beautiful that post dead ends at the top of the rail, and how it's such a nice straight line on the top of the fence. Um, so there are a bunch of tips and tricks watching these guys work that I learned, that I'm hoping you learn from this video as well. If you like the video, hit like. If you have any other tips or tricks on the fence, uh, please put them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, I actually, I love watching these guys build this fence. Not only would it have taken me days, if not probably two or three weekends, these two guys knocked it out in under six hours. All of the posts and materials delivered in under three, and then rails and boards up in the next three set of hours. I'm putting up these boards right here. They, they are conscientious of where that string is, and they are probably putting a level on every eighth board or so. And again, from the aerial view here, you can see how perfectly straight um, that fence is and how nice the whole thing looks, how the gap on the ground is pretty good. You could have had a little bit less gap on the ground, and the reason to do that is to keep pets in, but here we're actually not keeping pets in at all. It's just really a privacy fence, so I'd rather go as high as possible on this six-foot redwood fence on steel posts. Well, there it is, 100-foot of fence, about six hours, six-foot redwood fence. Uh, if you like the video, hit like and the bell for notifications. And if you like this channel, all things would, think about subscribing. So I'd like to hear your comments if you have any tips or tricks below. But I'll tell you, watching a 10-minute video like this before you start might save you hours.